Hello, good evening, and welcome to Practical Christianity Bible Study. My name is Tunde Disu. Thank you for taking the time out to be part of tonight's program. Uh, tonight's program is uh, still in line with what we have been looking at for the past four, five, almost six weeks now. Still talking about healing is your birthright. Healing is your birthright. However, tonight we're going to be focusing on the ongoing pandemic that the whole world is uh, is dealing with today, which is the coronavirus pandemic. So tonight's topic is nightfall in the world, the corona, coronavirus pandemic. There is no doubt, unless you've just come back from Saturn or Jupiter, that we all know what is going on in the world that we live in today. The whole world is in a state of panic, it's in a state of almost meltdown. It's in a state of unsure, uncertainty. Fear is ruling. People are wondering what is going to happen to them, to their loved ones, to their parents and their children and their spouse and their neighbors and all of that. And, and sometimes it is, uh, it is easy for all of us to be roped into what is going on and how it is going and this and that. But you see, what I want us to focus on tonight is, yes, it may be dark in Goshen. It may be dark in Goshen, but the Bible tells us that it's always light. Sorry, it may be dark in Egypt, there's always light in Goshen. The world is, is in a state of shaking and everybody is quaking in their boots and wondering, Life as we know it is no longer the same. Life as we knew it, maybe about a month ago, maybe two months ago, has changed completely and there is no guarantee that we are ever going to go back to how it used to be where it was. Because the last two months have really been filled with fear, panic, restlessness, governments, big and small, are all in a one state of confusion or the other. Experts are in complete confusion as well, not knowing what to do, not knowing what to say, how to go about it. They, the people are, they are wondering who can we trust in this time? Where can we put our hope? In whom can we put our, 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 our soul, the anchor of our soul? What can we rely on at this time? Because the so-called experts, they are quickly changing from one assumption to another, from one conclusion to another, attempting to come up with possible solutions or possible vaccine or possible uh, 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 prevention to one to this coronavirus, and it's as if as if they're running against time. Every time they think they have found a solution, every Every time they think they have found a way out, something else will pop up. And rapidly, the just concluded answer or supposed answer is no longer valid. It's completely out of, out of, out of fashion because the coronavirus pandemic is expanding at such a fast rate, at such an alarming rate that even trying to do catch up is not helping. Now, the essence of tonight's program is not to increase the, the tension and the and the restlessness and the panicking states that the world is. The essence of tonight's program is for us to look at where the world is right now. And what the Bible tells us, what has the Bible said about this season that we're in? But more than that, how you and I must see where we are, recognize the signs of the time, know what to do, be rest assured in the knowledge that we may be here in this world, but we are not of the world. Now, let me say this from the onset. I am not of the school of opinion that, oh, don't worry, uh, just 
uh, uh, decent. No, I am not for complacency. I am not involved in the school of thought that said, don't, don't think about it. God is in charge. Yes, God is in charge. But you see, there are lessons for you and I to learn. But more than that, this is the time, this is the season, this is the, this is the period that your life and my life as Christians, as children of God, this is the time that our lives must bring forth a, glue, a very radiant light into this darkness that the whole world is facing. You remember the, the, the song we used to sing, This Little Light of Mine, I'm going to let it shine and shine and shine. This is the time that this, our light, must shine forth to bring illumination to the darkness that the world is staring into right now. Because the Word of God, the Bible, pre wonders informed us explained this season to us, but more than that, instructed us on what to do, how to do, where to do, how to behave, how to think, how to respond. And unless we find ourselves, unless we bring ourselves back in line with those divine instructions and divine uh, uh, arrangements that were already in place before corona anything came on on the scene we will just be like them we will just be, be be blown from one end to another we will just be in the same state of fear and state of panic and state of unsure of of not sure of what we're doing but we are more than that we are more than that. In fact, the Gospel of John chapter 14 verse 1, John 14 verse 1 says, Let your heart not be troubled. Let your heart not be troubled because you believe in God. If you believe in God and you believe in Christ himself, then your heart should not be troubled. Don't let anything bother you. Don't let anything trouble you. Don't let anything cause you to question the solid rock that you are standing on. Because that rock is Jesus Christ himself. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 forewarned us about this. He said, there hath no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. What is going on now is not strange. It's not new. Yes, it may have a different name. There's nothing new about it. He said, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Whew. No virus, no sickness, no calamity, no epidemic and pandemic that is able, that is upon the surface of the earth like this, that is new. Oh, we've never seen this before. No, we may, not have, we may never have heard the name coronavirus before, or COVID-19 before, or whatever name you want to call it. It is common. It is common. You remember as far back as in Egypt, when the plague of, of, of plague just ravaged the whole land. What do you call that? That was a virus attack. It is common, but I like the word but. Because that word immediately changes everything we've read up to now. Whatever the temptation is, whatever the virus is, whatever the sickness and disease is, whatever the calamity the world is going through is, yes, it is common, but Cancel everything we've heard, we've said, we've read, we've talked about up to this point. But, but what? God is faithful. If all you do, if all we do is to remember these three words, God is faithful. If that is all that we remember. If that is all that we consume, if that is all that we focus on, if that is all that we put before our eyes, that God 
is faithful. Why? He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. He will not let you go through something. He will not let you pass through something. He will not allow anything to come near you that you don't have already enough power. Enough resources, enough deposit, enough anointing, enough of himself that is already stored up on the inside of you to overcome it because he's a faithful God. He will not allow you to suffer, to be tempted above that you are able to bear. But with all the temptation, with everything going on, he may. He makes a way of escape. There is always a window, an opportunity, a back door, a channel, a hole somewhere for you and I to escape. But the challenge with us is, the challenge with the world rather is, they get so focused on the problem. They get so consumed with the virus. They get totally swamped and, and, and totally taken over by, the, the, by what they can see. So much so that the door of escape, the way out of the problem, the solution to the challenge is right there in front of them, but they can't see it. But that's not your story and that is not my story. Because we know that God is faithful. And in his faithfulness, because of his faithfulness, through his faithfulness, by his faithfulness, he's already made a, a door of escape for us. Have you noticed what door of escape is for you today? Have you recognized the, 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 the window that God has left ajar on the side to say, my son, my daughter, don't be panicked. Let not your heart be troubled. There is a way out here. But you see, if we are just like them, if we are just like the world, if we are just like everyone else, people who are not party to this covenant of faith, if we're just like those who are not members of the commonwealth of faith, we'll just be shaking and trembling and quaking because we've been told by the experts the government the president the prime minister the health minister the no minister we've been told that this thing is just everywhere oh yes yeah, the, the, the virus is everywhere it has no respect for boundaries local national international it has no regard for for status whether you are in the political arena or financial arena, it has no regard for your achievement, your title. Mm -mm. It just goes. And when I read and I heard and I listened to the news about the coronavirus and how it has gripped the whole world in its claw, so much so everybody is sweating and panicking. It reminds me of a, a poem that I read where we studied rather when, when I was in secondary school. It was a poem called Nightfall in Soweto by Oswald Mbuyi Zeni Mchali. Nightfall in Soweto. It says, Nightfall comes like a dreaded disease. Seeping through the pores of a healthy body and ravaging it beyond repair. Sound like coronavirus. He said the murderer's hand lurking in the shadows, clasping the dagger, strikes down the helpless victim. Sounds like a coronavirus. He said, I am the victim. I am slaughtered every night in the streets. I am concerned by the fear gnawing at my timid heart. In my helplessness, I languish. It just is painting the picture of the effect of coronavirus. He said, man has ceased to be man. Man has become beast. Man has become prey. 
He said, I am the prey. I am the quarry to be run down by the marauding beast, let loose by cruel nightfall from his cage of death. Where is my refuge? He cried out. Where is my refuge? Where am I safe? Not in my matchbox house, matchbox house where I barricade myself against nightfall. I tremble at his crouching footsteps. I quake at his deafening knock at the door. Open up, he barks like a rabid dog, thirsty for my blood. And he concluded, he said, Nightfall, nightfall, you are my mortal enemy. But why were you ever created? Why can't it be daytime? Daytime forevermore. What is this? What, you, you, you probably ask him, what has that got to do with coronavirus? Everything. Because coronavirus, like this, this poet was talking about the night time in those days in, in, the, in the town of Soweto. Everybody's dreading night coming. Because that is the time when the evils perpetrate their, their deeds. That is the time when the unknown, the unexpected, when it creeps on you and, and lays its claws on you and takes life out of people. Just like coronavirus. It comes like a dreaded disease, seeping through the pores of a healthy body and ravaging it beyond repair. There's so many carriers of this coronavirus virus today that don't even know how they got it. Can't be traced to anything that they've done, anywhere they've been, anything they've been exposed to, yet they have the virus. Everybody is dreading what seems inevitable. Because if, if, if the graphic representation that we've seen in China, in South Korea, in Italy, and in other places is to go back, it's like nobody is immune from this. You can't outrun it. You can't command it to stay where it is and not come to you. President Donald Trump tried to close the border, open the border, shut the border. It, it still finds its way into America. It's invisible to the eyes. You can't see it. You can't even perceive that it's coming. And yet, it, 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 it lands on you. It's almost that the world is waiting helplessly at the mercy of coronavirus. And because it acts... It behaves, it moves, it responds, it attacks people in a mysterious way. It's almost impo it is impossible to know who is going to get it next. It's impossible to know how it's going to affect the next person that will get it. It's impossible, almost impossible to know how this person's immune system will react, will respond, will relate to it. There was a, at the beginning, they said, oh, Children are exempted. A little child just died a few days ago from this coronavirus. The experts are coming together. Let's make this vaccine. Let's make this kill. And while they are debating, while they are arguing, while they are talking about it, coronavirus finds its way and it reaches out and grabs one of them and infects one of them. And suddenly, the experts are now infected. But you see, the good news for you and I is this. Psalms 91 from verse 1 to 2. It said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Are you, are you the he? Whosoever dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Where are you dwelling today? What is, where is your abode? What is your postcode or your zip code? What is the number of your house? What, on what street? What's your house address? Where are you dwelling today? Because unless you are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, His shadow will not be able to cover you. But when you dwell in the secret place of the Almighty, 
of the Most High, and you abide. You see, it's one thing to dwell there. Many people have addresses that say Christianity, that says born again, that says church goer, and a deacon, and a pastor, and a bishop, and a Jew, and, and this and that. Brothers and sisters, they, they have the address, they dwell in the in the in this in the address, but are they abiding? Is that where we will find you when we come asking, when we come looking, when we come checking? Would you be abiding in that secret place? Because it is one thing for you to dwell there, it's a different story for you to abide. Because unless you abide in the secret place of the Almighty God, his shadow. You are, on, you are not under his shadow. But when you dwell and you abide, now you and I will be able to say, I will say of the Lord. Because I know where I'm dwelling. I know where I am abiding. Then I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. How many people can say that? Can you say that right now at this hour, considering all that is going on around the world, around your neighborhood, in your school, in your workplace, in the marketplace, can you truly say, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. And I'm not talking of you just quoting the Bible passage. Because until you dwell and you abide, you're not qualified to say that. Have you noticed? Because of coronavirus, everything that was seemingly worthless and people don't pay attention to, suddenly they now become the most valuable items. I mean, I saw the other day, people were physically beating themselves up because of toilet roll. A pack of toilet roll and three Grown-up adults were physically bouncing themselves. That same toilet roll two weeks ago. Everybody walked past it on the eye as if it was not there. Suddenly, our, our perspective, our ability to put value on things changed because of coronavirus. Shelves are empty. Basic items, bread, rice, sugar, tea, biscuit, all gone in a space of one week. And there's no guarantee of when the next delivery will be. Everybody is buying and hoarding and keeping and their fridge and freezers are overflowing. Now, I'm not saying don't be prepared, but what we are seeing now is not preparation. It's people living in fear. But the reason they are living in fear is because they don't know. They don't know how this, this, this dreaded virus is, is operating. But you and I, we just know. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no virus, for he is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Because I am dwelling, I am abiding in his secret place and under his shadow. Have you noticed how the usual very busy roads are now just empty? City centers, shopping malls, they've become ghost towns now. People have been engaged in self-imprisonment. There is wisdom in that, but why are we doing it? Is it because of or despite of? Self-imprisonment is now in vogue. Every public service is stretched to breaking point or already grounded to a halt. Have you noticed how because of coronavirus, because the world is in fear of coronavirus, have you noticed how almost all social, social gatherings are now cancelled? 
even the religion of the masses, sports I'm talking about now, where everybody goes on Saturday and Sunday to bow down and worship, where everybody goes on Saturday and Sunday to lose their minds for, for, for a, a split second. Football, basketball, ba uh, baseball, Formula One, boxing, this and that, all cancelled. Even the Tokyo Olympics is now under threat because of coronavirus. But for you and I, Psalms 23 verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. What is with you right now? What is with you right now? Or are you like the poet who is dreading nightfall in Soweto? Because there's a, a murderous hand clasping a dagger, lurking, and strikes, strikes down its, 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 its victim. Is that who you are? Or are you one of them that said, even though, let it be known that even when I am standing in the midst of death and its shadows, and it's angels, and it's coronavirus. One thing I will not do is to be afraid. Because there's a greater one on the inside of me. There is the blood type of Jesus flowing in my vein that does not allow for any contamination, any attack, or any effect of coronavirus. And because of that, that is my comfort. That is where my hope, my trust, my faith is. Or are you still waiting for the vaccine to be found, which will take another 12 to 18 months time? Where are you right now, my brother, my sister? Where are you? Where are you? Have you noticed that even money is failing? It's not just failing, it's falling as well. Have you seen what is happening to the world stock market? How they are tumb tumbling down and falling down and down and down and down. How people's high blood pressure has become so high because now they're losing their money. It was reported that the, the, the Dow Jones in America lost in one day 1,200 points. The biggest crash since 2008 when the world had the, the financial crash in one day. People whose trust are in their paper-rich wealth, they've been reduced to crying like babies. As they watch in disbelief, their so-called um, uh, 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 built empire just come crashing down like a house of cards. Because their hope, their trust, their faith is in their wealth. And now that, that wealth is being drained out as if somebody just unplugged the, the cock of a, of, a, of, a, of a bathtub. No wonder the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 17. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 17 says, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but they put their trust in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. All things. All things to enjoy. Not here today, gone tomorrow. Not amassed today and drained tomorrow. Not happy today, you are a millionaire, and tomorrow you are a beggar. No. God, put your trust in him. Put your trust in the living God because he giveth us all things richly to enjoy. Night, is, night has fell in the world. 
not just in Soweto. Nightfall is upon this world as we know it. Because coronavirus is seeping through every fabric, every part of the world and ravaging them beyond repair. Production lights have stopped. Even the machines are happy. They are now taking that well-earned holidays that they should have taken, that they should have been given. Now they are resting. In fact, in some homes, some fathers are experiencing what parenthood is all about, probably for the first time. Maybe for the first time. They are now getting a taste of what the wives have been dealing with, coping with, handling. Because now, schools have closed, children at home, offices have closed, fathers are at home, and the children are restless. They must be entertained. They must be looked after. They must. Be. You see, coronavirus is, is, is just is, is changing the landscape as we know it. Where are you in all of this? Where are you? Unlike its predecessors that were easily labeled and assigned, that were easily categorized and, and assigned, coronavirus is refusing to be labeled and confined to, to any regional or, or personal continental problem. No, it's an equal opportunity attacker. It is traveling freely from coast to coast, from the north to the south, from the east to the west, and everything in between. Because when HIV AIDS epidemic came up, oh, they said, oh, that was the problem with homosexuals. So it's the illness and the problem that is only pertaining to homosexuals. When the Ebola virus came last time, oh, they said that was an African monkey problem. What are you going to say about Corona? People have tried to say it is a Chinese virus. It is a well, Wuhan virus. Well, it's in your house now. It's in your government now. It's in your legislative parliament now. It is in your, in your street now. What are you going to say? It is indeed seeping through. Seeping through. So when we are faced, when the world is faced, is going through, is experiencing things like this, it is time for us as children of God to remember our covenant of peace, our covenant of healing, our covenant of nothing missing and nothing broken with God that he ratified in the blood of his son. He said in this world there will be trouble, but don't, don't let that bother you because I have overcome the world. In this world there will be challenges, there will be problems, there will be coronavirus, Hold your peace. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the sickness. I have overcome the virus. I have overcome everything that can come against you. Because when you are in Christ, when you are born again, you are hidden in him. You are under, you are dwelling and abiding. And anything that will touch you, that will affect you, will first of all have to go through Jesus. But the Bible did warn us. The Bible told us that this is coming. It told, the Bible told us this is going to happen. Because in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, from verse 6 to verse 8, it, we were told. 
He said, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Are we not hearing that every day? He said, but see that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So, all these prophets of doom and, and say, oh, now the world is coming to an end. Oh, by the end of April, the world will finish and the, by May, it will rest. It, Jesus said, it's not the end yet. Oh, no, far from it. He said, nation shall rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines. And pestilences and earthquakes in various places. It's not confined to one region, to one nation, to one continent, to one group of people, to one social class. No, it's in diverse places. We're seeing that now. But he said, all these are the beginnings of sorrows. Whew. Wait, are you saying what we've seen so far, what the world is experiencing so far, is just the beginning. And yes, that's what Jesus said. But you know what the good news is? <laughs> oh, Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you. The good news for you and I is in Exodus chapter 8, verse 22. He said, and I will serve her in that day, the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarm of flies shall be there. To the end, thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. He said, where my people are, if you are a carrier of my name, if you carry the mark of the Son of God, if the lintel of your house has been taught and painted by the precious blood of Jesus, if the lamb has been slain for you and you have accepted the sacrifice, if you are a partaker of this covenant of peace, if you are a child of God, He said, I have set you apart in the land of Goshen, where you dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, no coronavirus or any other virus or any other, it will come near, it, no wonder the Bible said, no plague will come near my dwelling, no plague, no, I don't care what its name is, I don't care where it's coming from. It will not come near my dwelling. You know why? Because in, the, in those days in Egypt, all the houses that were marked, that were painted, that were touched with the blood of the Lamb, when the spirit of death came, he passed them over. He did what? He passed them over. Why it was dark in Egypt, why even Pharaoh was crying in his palace because of the death of his first son, man. Why the whole of Egypt were wailing and mourning and crying. The children of Israel were enjoying their barbecue. They were enjoying their full course meal for the night before they put their blessed head on their blessed pillow, just like you and I today. I will preserve the land of Goshen. I will protect the land of Goshen. I will exempt the land of Goshen. Why? Because that is where God's people live. That is where they dwell. That is where they abide. Where are you living today? What is your abiding address right now? You know, one of the things that this reminded me of is the story of Noah and the building of the ark. When God said to Noah, build me an ark because there's a rainfall coming. There's a flood approaching. And Noah spent years building the ark. They were laughing at him. They were mocking him. They were calling him names. They said he's gone out of his mind. The son is made him gone crazy. 
just like he's doing to you now. Every Sunday when you pick up your Bible to go to church, every time you get on your knees to pray, every time you lift up holy hands to, to praise the Lord, every time you're, you're out of the overflowing of your belly, you just break out in Rakeshi Katobile Ataya Daba. People think, oh, he, here we go again. He's, he's gone. He's crossed the boundary. The, the, fleet, the lift is not going up to the top floor anymore. Let them say that they said that about your big uncle Noah. Let them say that they said that about your big uncle Noah. Let them mock you. Let them sing your, your thinking they are mocking you. They just dig in their own graves. Because while Noah was preparing the ark, they were laughing at him. They were calling him name. They were shouting. They were mocking. They were doing all of that. Just like they're doing to those who dwell and abide today. Now, I'm not saying that God sent this coronavirus to the world. I don't care where it came from. I know it's not from God because only good and perfect gifts come from God. So coronavirus, if it's killing, if it's stealing, if it's destroying, it's nothing to do with God. So I'm not saying the, this virus is from God. I'm just using this as an example to say it happened before. So why knew I was doing all of that? Huh? What is rain? We never heard that before. It won't come here. We don't even know what you're talking about. You are out of your mind. And then the flood came. And then the rain fell. And they were all consumed. Is it only you going to church? Is it only you singing in church? Is it only you this? Is it only you that? Is it this? Is it this? Is it? And the coronavirus came. And while they were being ravaged, you were dancing in your front porch, enjoying the goodness of God. Because who could have predicted that there would be a time, a a, a particular time where the whole weekend, throughout a whole weekend, not just one, two, three, four weekends in a row, there will be no major sporting event anywhere going on. All those doing it, they're doing it in the bottom of the bottom of their corner. Who could have predicted a situation where even the superpowers, the so-called superpowers, they are completely powerless? Who could, excuse me, who could have predicted that the whole world would be held captive by a virus considering, just considering the technological advancement of this age? Who could have predicted that? When there is AI and an artificial intelligence and big machine numbers and this and, and break through this and break down that, who could have predicted? Who could have predicted that the same virus that is killing all pensioners in their rural villages and in their care homes, that same virus is attacking health ministers, presidents' wives, legislators, even medical doctors, celebrities, people of fame and rich and whatever, it's an equal opportunity attacker. Who could have predicted that the world would be at war with itself, fighting an unseen enemy? Because even the experts are saying, before we are able to find a cure for this thing, it's going to be about 12 months. The earliest is about 12 months down the line. Imagine that. Who could have predicted that the world economy would be brought down to its knees by a virus that is not attacking the, the computers in the stock exchange? No, it's just on the street and the economic world is falling apart. Who could have predicted that? But you see, nobody could have predicted that. Just that like nobody believed there would be rain or flood in the days of Noah. And then it came and wiped them all out. Let me tell you something.
the world as we know it has changed. I will never be the same again. The challenge is, would you change too? Will you adapt and find the true meaning of life rather than place your hope on things that are here today, gone tomorrow? Because there's a, there's a way of escape. There is an alternative. There is a better option for you and I. But it's a matter of choice. And there is still time for you to make a decision of what the summation of your life will be. To decide what your postcode and your zip code and your house address will be. Would you choose to dwell and abide in that secret place? Or are you going to be exposed? Just like the rest of the world. Because Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 9 said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life. If you are too, too, too wise for yourself not to know what to choose, let me make you a recommendation. Choose life that both you and your seed may live. What, is, what choice are you making now? Maybe you've been told to, to, to consider God, to give God a chance in your life, to, to walk in, in before him, to, to ex establish a relationship with God. And you say, no, <laughs> church is, uh, this God thing is just for the weaklings and the, the, those who don't have the means, those who don't know what they're doing and all of that. Well, Brother Coronas is knocking on your door soon. You have the time. Make that time now. Make that choice now. Make that decision now. Choose life now. Secure your today and guarantee your future. Make that choice now. Because there's a better alternative. alternative. There's a pathway that leads to eternal peace and rest. Would you choose Jesus today, my brother, my sister? Would you accept his sacrifice? Would you choose him to be your address? Would you choose to dwell and abide in the presence of the Almighty God? So that his shadow, his shadow can hang over you. So that you can truly say, in him I trust. So that you can truly say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for I know in whom I have trusted. I know who is with me. I know who is by me. I know who is standing with me. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life now. Choose life today. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. Choose life today. Choose the way. Choose the truth. Choose life. Make him your dwelling place. Make him the anchor of your soul. Make him the, the, the sustainer of, of your life. Put your life in his hand because it is only in his hand that your life and my life are secured. Because if you don't know before, now you know. Coronavirus is an equal opportunity attacker. It does not respect your name, your village, your title, your position, your, uh, uh, your wealth. No, it just... Psh, Would you choose life, therefore, and rob coronavirus its power and deny the grave its sting by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? So that whatever is happening to the world, that whatever is happening in Egypt, whatever plague that is affecting the world, you are exempted, you are cocooned, you are protected, your case is different. Would you accept Jesus right now? Today, because Psalms 91 from verse 5 to verse 8 
Psalm 91, 5 to 8 said, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth a new day. A thousand a thousand shall fall. Not that they may fall or they could fall. No, they will, they shall fall. A thousand shall fall at thy side. And ten thousand at thy right hand. But it will not come near thee. It will not come near you. It will not come near me. Only with your eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of, of this world, the wicked world. Put it like 11,000 people, 11,000 people would have to have been affected and killed and died before it would, it would think of you. And the moment it, it, coronavirus thinks about your name and your address, the blood of Jesus will say, touch not. No plague is allowed to come near this dwelling, but 11,000 are already on the ground. Choose life today. Choose life today. Choose life now. Choose life now. There is no other avenue available to man to escape the calamity of this world than to be hidden in Christ. To dwell in his presence and be protected by his everlasting arm of love. It is never too late. It is never too late to do the right thing. It is never too late to make the right decision. It is never too late to, do, to, to choose the right choice. And the time to do it is now. It's now. Because fear. Fear is ruling the world right now. If you don't know, just switch on your TV and listen to CNN, Fox News, BBC, uh, uh, Sky News, any news, no news, every news. Fear is driving the world right now. Shopping malls are now just where children go to ride bicycles because there's nothing on the shelf. Even there's nobody in the shop to buy them. Everybody is under lock and key. The government are tired. They've tried this, they've tried that, they've they explained this and deceived this. They are tired. Some are still lying to their people while others are pretending that, oh, we're stronger than all of this and one day it will just disappear. It, this ain't disappearing. Nobody has a clear answer to the real question that people are asking. It's only those who dwell and abide will be exempted. There's only one place where the right answers are, where the good answer, the correct answer, where they reside. And that's in him that has become for us wisdom. The Bible said Christ has become for us wisdom. You know, this coronavirus is an agent of the thief. And it comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the good news for you and I, the good news for you that are listening, watching this program, the good news for you is this. There's an alternative. There's a different way. There's a better way. In fact, there is the only way. Because the Gospel of John chapter 10 from verse 9 to 10 John chapter 10 from verse 9 to 10 said, I am the door. That's Jesus talking. He said, I am the door. Not I am a door. No, no. If he says I am a door, it means there are other doors. He said, I am the door, the only door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Thank you, Lord. If any man enter in by me, Jesus, he said, that man, that woman, that boy, that girl shall be saved. 
and shall go in and out and find pasture. He said the thief, and part of the gang of the thief is this coronavirus. He says the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But guess what? He said, I am come that you might have life and you might have this life more abundantly. What's he saying? The thief has come to destroy, to steal, to kill, to subtract, to divide, to reduce you. He said, but I have come. I am here. Jesus Christ said he is here right now. So that you can have life to the full, in abundance, until it is overflowing and being a blessing to others. You don't need to have a degree in metaphysics to be able to understand the difference between those two. You don't need to have to be a rocket scientist. You don't need to have a degree in law to be able to differentiate between the two. Choose life today. Choose life today. Choose life today. Because fear is ruling the world now. But 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. A sound mind. Choose life today, my brother. Choose life today, my sister. Choose life now. If you don't know Jesus, if you have never given your life, ask Jesus to come into your life. If you have never chosen life before, if you have never made this decision before, or you made the decision some time ago, and because of this or that, because of church and the people of church, because of this or that, you decide to walk away. There's an invitation to that. There is an invitation being extended to you today so that you too, like me and many others and millions and billions of others, so that you too can dwell in the secret place and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Because Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the begotten Son of God, paid so that you can live life to the full in abundance until it overflows. Choose life today, my brother. Choose life now. If you are watching this program now or you're watching it any other time and you don't know Jesus, you have no relationship with him, you have not accepted him or invited him into your life, he is not your Lord and Savior, you are not dwelling and abiding with him, would you just say this short prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today just as I am. Nothing to hide, nothing to add. I am just here as I am. I know I've walked way, the way I've chosen, the way I live, the way I like. But it hasn't really ended me in any way safe, protected. I have no guarantee of tomorrow. There is, there is no assurance of my future. I know that I'm a sinner. But right now, I confess my sins. I ask for your forgiveness. Forgive me of all my sins. And now I invite you, come into my life. Take hold of me. Be my Lord and my Savior. From this day forward, I choose life. I choose you. I choose to follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for writing my name in the book of life. Now I know I'm born again. Now I know I'm secure. Now I know my future is guaranteed because I am dwelling from this moment and I'm abiding from this hour under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen.
whoosh, thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. If you have just prayed that prayer, I am so thrilled for you. I am so happy that you choose life. You did not allow fear to dominate you, but you have chosen life. You have accepted the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, into your heart. i like to pray with you. i like to walk with you. i like to be with you, to support you in this journey, in this newness of life. Because the Bible said, once you become born again, every old thing has gone away. Everything is now new. Let me walk with you on this journey as we take these baby steps towards you becoming mature in the things of God. Inbox me. Send me a message. Send me, contact me whichever way in through any of my social media handles. And it will be the honor of my life to stand shoulder to shoulder with you as we embark on this journey which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And look forward to hearing from you. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. For all those that have said this prayer tonight, and all those that will say it after watching this program, whenever and wherever, I ask you, O oh God, that you touch them in a special way and give them the assurance that only you can give and let them know for sure, for definite, without a question without a shadow of a doubt that they are truly sons and daughters of God. Thank you for protecting and preserving them. To you alone be all the glory. It's in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for all that, for sharing this time with me and being with me. And I, I, I know a lot of things have been said. But maybe you need to go and listen to this message again and just try to, to get more out of it, to milk it for all it's worth. You may want to even share it with your contact, with people on your, on, your, on, your, on your Facebook or any other social media handles because the world is living in fear. But there is, a, there is hope. There is an answer. There is a way. There is a better way. And this is a pathway that we have seen tonight. God bless you. Thank you. Have a great rest of the week, whatever you do. Let not your heart be troubled. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.